Here's a circuit. Ah, looks scary. There's so many batteries. What are we trying to find? Three identical cells, negligible internal resistance, connected as shown. What is the potential difference between two points? Notice how we say potential difference. So maybe you have a potential of, I don't know, two volts here and a potential of eight volts here. Then a potential difference will be eight minus two, which is four. I know they're all V, but potential and potential difference are different things. Okay, they all, they all use the same unit V, unfortunately. You know, it's kind of saying, if I am two meters high and this giant is eight meters high, what is the difference in height? Eight minus two is four meters. Similar thing, okay? Similar idea, lah, right? So you have potential and then you have potential difference. With that in mind, let's take a look at the circuit properly. So when you move from, let's say, a point P and you move around the circuit, let's say this direction, following the direction of current, you are going to experience potential rise and potential drop. Okay, rise and drops, rise and drops. So let's look at that first before we go into solving the question. So you go from, okay, let's say we start at P. We follow the orange arrow, we go to the right. We cross over E and this is what we call a potential rise. Because you're going uphill from negative to positive. Ne? Negative of the battery to positive of the battery. It's like you're climbing a hill, okay? So your increased potential, you go up. If your battery is 12 volts, you go from 0 to 12. Or you go from 8 to 20 volts. Okay, going up. It's called a rise. Like climbing mountain. Then you go across the resistor. You lose energy. So it's a potential drop. You're going down. Get the idea so far? Okay, rise, drop. Okay, then we come to this battery. E on the right side. Hmm. Notice how you're going from positive to the negative side now. So you're going from a high potential to a lower potential. So you're going downhill. Okay, we are following the direction of current or the loop. So this is a drop. Okay, so here I will draw a drop here. Let me also zoom in a bit more lah, huh? so you can see. Okay, let me rub this off so you can see. So you get the idea? Rise, drop, rise, drop. You're climbing mountain, you're going down valley. You're climbing mountain, you're going valley. Now you're going across a resistor. Resistors, you can only lose potential. So you're having a, experiencing a drop in potential here. Drop. Now in the down there section, there's no components. So it's just same potential throughout there. We come back one round, back to E. Now look at this one. I rub off this one so you don't see. You're going from which side? The negative side to the positive side. So that is a rise. You are in this direction. If you follow this direction, you are rising. You're going uphill, taking the escalator up. So rise. Okay, across the resistor, this is a drop. And we're back to the starting point. Okay. So this is basically the idea of Kirchhoff's law. You have rise, you have drops, and you're going in a loop. And you should, after all that rise and drop, when you come back to point P, you should be at the same potential as before. Okay? So, with that in mind, we are finding what is the potential difference between P and Q. Now, if let's say I just assume that P is zero volt potential, my reference point, I choose zero. If I go up by a certain amount, whatever amount that is, that is my potential difference already lah. If this is 12, then our potential difference is 12. So the nice thing is, this one, I know the rise is E. Rise in potential is E because potential difference is E. But then I drop by a certain amount. And how do I calculate that drop? I calculate by I times R. So the answer that I'm looking for, actually, the potential difference is E. Well, plus E, okay, la, potential difference equals to plus E minus IR. That's the answer. Okay, so if I have zero volt potential, I go up by E, I drop by R. So here will be plus E minus IR lo, volts. So potential will be plus E minus IR minus zero. Okay, answer. Oh, no. So if you notice, the answer has no current I in it. We need to figure a way to get rid of the I. What is this? This, 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 this I. 
Is there an expression we can create to get rid of it? Yes, there is. So let's try to find the current. <sighs> okay, okay. So next step, we find the current. A formula for the current. So let's do Kirchhoff's law, why not? We just start from P, go one whole loop and come back. Like what we did just now. So I'm going to start from point P. Um, let's use this one. Okay, let me do Kirchhoff's law. So all the rises, there's two rise and a bunch of drops. There are two ways to do this. I'm, you may be more familiar with this method. The EMFs equals to all the potential drops. So I need to think of all the EMFs. I'll show you both methods, lah, this method number one. All the EMFs, okay, we have E. Okay, it's going up. Oh, but then the second E is a drop, so I need to minus E. Then I come to the third battery, it's a rise in the direction of my loop, so I plus E. Then, what are all the drops? I mean, there are so many drops. Uh, external resistor drops, uh, not, counting the resist not counting the battery. So I have I times R plus R plus R, three resistor. This will give me the final equation of E equals to I 3R, which tells me that the current can be expressed as E over 3R. Nice. Okay, so if I want to find the answer now, I can. I can say the PD, potential difference, is E minus IR. But I just found what I is, and that is E over 3R, so I can substitute that in here. So current is E over 3R. Is that correct? Ah? Yeah, correct. Okay, times R. <sighs> Very nice. R and R cancel out. So E minus 1 over 3E, that will give me 2 over 3E. And that is my final answer to tell me the potential difference between P and Q. Difference, ah, potential difference, E and Q. So 2 over 3E, this is the answer. Very nice. Now, to recap, I mentioned, I'll show you another method, right? This one, an alternative to Kirchhoff's law. Sure, let me show you the other method. So method 2, how do you find the current expression for current? Uh, kind of rewind a little bit. Well, 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 okay. Here we are. So another method is to say that all the potential changes in the loop equals to zero. So you start at P, you go one round, you come back, you should be at the same potential. It's like you start at a place in the mountain, you hike to the valley, you hike to the sea, you don't know where you hike, but you come back to the same spot, you should be at the same height. Okay, You are at home, you go one round, you go to the village, you go to the house, you go to the building, you take the elevator up. But you still come home at the end of the day and you should be at the same height. That's the same idea here, method 2. So here I'm going to say all the rises are positive, all the drops are negative. So I start from there, no? I just say, oh, plus E, go up. Oh, it's a drop, so minus? Oh? Mm, drop again, okay, minus E. Oh. Drop again, oh, minus IR. Rise, okay, so I plus, drop, then I minus IR. And all this rise, drop, rise, drop, rise, drop, I come back to the same point P, I should be at the same potential. So all my rise, all my drops, they should come back to the same point. So if I, if I rearrange all the E's to be on one side, I will realize that I have E minus E plus E, and everything else I throw to the other side. So I have IR plus IR plus IR, which gets us to the same solution. E equals to 3IR. Okay, that's the same as the other method here. Which one makes more sense to you? I don't know. Okay, look at the orange on the left and look at this one on the right. The left one, you have to know which are drops. Drops are the ones where you will say positive, lah, okay? Honestly, I recommend that you know you use the one on the right because you can very clearly see what is minus, what is plus without too much confusion. Okay, the left one, you kind of have to know which is plus or minus. But yes, the main idea is the one on the right or up here above me. Everything go up, you plus. Everything go down, you drop. Drop and you minus. 
and everything equals to zero at the end of the day. Celebration. Woohoo! Okay, so that's all for this question. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Comment down below if you have any further questions or doubts. But that's all for this question. See you in the next one.